Jennifer, Formation for Mission, what was the need for this publication? Well, the sector really signalled that formation is a priority and that people needed um, a resource to help. Um, so CHA got a group together and I was really pleased to be part of that. I was chair of Pathways. Um, and the, the publication was, the resource was really put together as a, a way of respecting um, the current leaders who have the responsibility of carrying the mission and uh, to make it, uh, to assist them to make it as easy as, as they can to understand what formation is about. Yeah. Margaret, one of the sections is really important. It's uh, got detailed description of the behaviours that are expected um, in Catholic health and aged care and community services in leadership. Often people don't really understand what expected apart from adhere to the values. Mm. So this gives them a lot of um, enlightenment, mm. <laughs> um, the opportunity to understand at a deeper level. Mm. There's quite a lot in it, so I would uh, really recommend that people look at it all, but then just focus in on a few key behaviours that are really important for their, their organisation at this time. Formation for Mission, who was the audience you had in mind for this publication? Really we had in mind boards, um, leadership teams, executive leadership teams and absolutely uh, resource for mission leaders. Julia, I notice you've got a copy of Catholic Health Australia's Formation for Mission publication. I do. Okay. Have you found it useful? Absolutely, that's to say the least and especially when I think of um, the section five on the priorities for further development, page 28 in particular, it, and then it goes on for a few pages, but it really gives the board and executive a structure to work out what their formation needs are and how they prioritise them. And obviously the beginning of the book gives them the foundational work to help them understand how they do that prioritising. Because it can also be a bit, um, challenging. If you're suddenly a new board member or a new executive and haven't worked in a Catholic organisation, just to read what some of them mean is like a bit of mental gymnastics. But the tool gives them all the background to then be able to go away and make the priorities that then come back to someone like me. Kerry, in the work that you do consulting with organisations about their formation, have you found this resource, Formation for Mission, a, a help? Oh yes, it's actually a terrific resource. Um, what it does is it, it lays out a very nice definition of formation and I think for some uh, people that's quite hard to grasp and it, it, it offers a really good definition. Um, well, I particularly like it because it offers a framework for thinking about formation and where the mission team may not be a large mission team, it, this is a sort of resource that in a sense provides that framework or at least the beginnings of that framework that, that can then be used by the organisation to, to be personalised for that particular Catholic ministry. The other reason that I really like it is because it actually offers a way of thinking about the sort of formation needs that different groups might need. So it speaks about the, the way of assessing formation needs around um, individual conversations with executive or board members, but it also looks at a broader formation um, programs that you might be offering in particular areas. I'd really strongly recommend this as a, as a really excellent resource to be thinking about formation programs. Mm -hmm.